Right, fire away. Hi everybody. So today I'm going to show you six different types of print. Now, print and pattern is something that I'm really, really passionate about because it's a really exciting way to add a bit of character to your outfit, but also the history behind the prints that I'm going to show you is absolutely fascinating. So I'm going to start with the classic Breton, which has real coastal connotations. It's a real coastal classic. And that's because back in the 1800s, it was actually used as the uniform for French Navy sailors. And because of its distinctive print, it was chosen because if any wayward sailors were to fall overboard, then it was eye-catching enough that they would be seen. But back in the 1800s, this wasn't the only um, workwear that was used with the Breton print. It was actually also used within prison cells for the inmates. And again, because it's so eye-catching, it was to spot them if any were to make a lucky escape. But also the lines or the stripes were to symbolise the bars of the cells that they were behind. Now, the Breton print was made famous as a more sort of mainstream fashion item by Chanel back in 1917 when she actually took a trip to the coast. And Chanel was really passionate about taking men's workwear or menswear in general and reworking it to fit the female form. So she'd seen the way that it was used within the workwear and was really keen to make it something that females could wear. You've got to be a little bit careful with the Breton print because of the stripes. It can make you appear a little bit wider than you really are when you wear it. Another way that can be more flattering, slightly different twist, is to have the prints diagonally or vertically instead of horizontally. And next up, I have the leopard print. Now, the leopard print was actually first seen back in ancient Egypt, when the women there would stencil animal prints onto linen to wear. The rest of the world, unfortunately, went on to wear prints in their true fur form, originally to protect us against the outer elements, but because it also became a real fashionable, fashionable thing to do, particularly, particularly within 1920s, um, the real sort of Hollywood starlets would wear an awful lot of fur. It was down to Dior in 1947 who put leopard print as an actual print rather than fur onto the runway. And then soon after that, within the 60s, everybody began campaigning against fur. But leopard print, love it or hate it, is really, really flattering for all body shapes to wear. Now the important thing about these prints being so timeless is they're not gonna go anywhere. They've been around for centuries. So if you like any of the styles of print, it's really worth thinking about buying into these styles because of the longevity. They're not gonna go out of date next month, next year, or even the next decade. Next up is the houndstooth. Now, traditionally you would see this more in a black and white check. That seems to be the way that it's worn quite a lot at the moment. But black and white, because of my warm colouring, isn't very flattering. And all the clothes I'm showing you are my own, so they are in colours that are suitable for me to wear. Now the houndstooth is identifiable because it has a darker and a lighter fabric interwoven together. And in fact, the first time that this has been found, um, or not been found, a, a garment was discovered in a Swedish bog and it dates back to between 360 and 100 BC. And that was a piece of fabric that was interwoven with the hound's tooth effect. Its name comes from the effect of the interweaving of the fabric because it's got a slightly jagged edge. It almost looks as though a bite that a dog or a hound would leave if it was to bite you. So that is where the name hound's tooth print derives from. Okay, next up we have floral prints. Now, originally floral prints were created in China back in the 12th century, where they would use silk and they would embroider scenes of nature and 
plants or flowers that had a really symbolic meaning. But within our country, in the Victorian times, we actually used real flowers for our outfits. So ladies would wear flowers in their hair, or they would add them to pins and brooches to personalise their outfit and also because of the fragrance um, to cover any bodily odour because washing was obviously less frequent back in those times. In fact, there was a lot of symbolism with the flowers, even within Victorian England. There were bouquets of flowers that could be sent to one another, which were called nosegays, and there would be a hidden message between each of these bouquets which you could find the meaning within a flower dictionary, which is around at the time. And again, with the items of clothing that they wore and the flowers that they attached to them, they would also have symbolic meanings which could be found within those flower dictionaries, which I think is really sweet and a little bit of a shame that we've kind of lost that symbolic nature within the flowers that we wear nowadays. So, Moving on from the Victorian times, flower prints became hugely popular in the 60s with flower power. So the flowers were big, they were bold, they were vibrant. Then they carried on within the 70s, but had the, the colouring changed slightly, it became a little bit muddy down. There was a lot of brown and orange. And then fast forwarding on to the 80s, again, we were back to really, really vibrant colours. From the 90s onwards, the floral prints have had more of a romantic feel, which has continued on to the present day. Now the paisley print is, oh my goodness, one of my most favorite prints when you think about the history behind it. It's just fantastic. So the paisley print looks quite inoffensive. It's very sweet, it's very feminine, it's very soft, but actually the history behind it is really, really, rock and roll. So there is a, gen a genre of film, which you'd have probably all seen, which always has a paisley print inside of it. And that is the cowboy movies, the westerns, because cowboys bandanas always had a, ba a paisley print um, within them. And then this carried on for um, bikers riding their Harley Davidsons. And also between gangs within New York, there was the blue paisley bandana or the red paisley bandana, depending on where you came from, which represented which gang you were from. The Beatles made it really psychedelic within the 60s. In fact, John Lennon actually had his car wrapped within a paisley print. And then you've got Prince, who loved the paisley print so much. Not only did he wear it, but he also named the record company that he founded um, Paisley Park Records. Liam Gallagher was also a huge fan and he created a menswear brand called Pretty Green back in 2009. But you can still find it, it's still online and it's still got a really heavy Paisley influence. And then last up we have the polka dots. Now this has also got a really interesting history behind it. We see the, the polka dots nowadays as quite a cheerful, retro, fun print to have within our wardrobe. But back in medieval Europe, it was actually really frowned upon. It was really taboo to wear the dotty print. So back then, they don't have the printing technologies that obviously we have nowadays. So the spots weren't fully rounded, they weren't uniform, and they weren't spaced out evenly. evenly. And they felt that the that the dotted fabric was a representation of the rashes caused throughout the plague, um, through smallpox and through leprosy as well. So wearing dots back in the medieval England was a real no-no. It then became more popular in the 19th century and had a really, that was because of the polka dot dance, but it had a really, really huge boost in the 60s when it was used in cartoons. So 1961, Minnie Mouse was formed with her red and white spotted dress and also polka dots feature within comic books as well. There is the polka dot man from 1962 where whenever he pressed one of his polka dots, a new weapon would appear in his hand, which I think is just brilliant. So that is the end of the six different prints that I was going to show you. I have got a couple of tips on how to wear them. So if you are 
large in scale. And when I'm talking about scale, I'm talking about your height and your bone structure. So I'm five foot 10, I've got size eight feet. I'm a size 12, I've got big goalie hands. So the best way for me to wear polka dots is in a large print. So large polka dots and quite a lot of space in between them. Whereas if you are more dainty, if you are petite, if you're under five foot three, then you'll find that having smaller dots closer together is much more flattering. If you're in between those sizes, then think about wearing an average sized print. Another top tip for patterns is if you find it difficult to know what colour combinations work well together, then look at the colours that are already in printed clothing because the designers have already put in all the hard work for you in bringing the combinations of colours that work particularly well. So looking at my top here, you could see that if I was to wear a camel pair of chinos and then perhaps a white or cream top with a lime green cardigan, those items would work really well together because they work really well on the print already. So think about that when you're looking through your wardrobe. If you've got prints and colours within the prints that you really like, think about how you could sort of dissect that and have different items of clothing that pull those colours together. And also when you go around the shop, so you might come across prints when you're out shopping that you think, oh, that's too bold for me, I'd never wear it, but you love the colours that are within the print. So if you're not a print person, think about how you could purchase perhaps those separate items in those colours. Other things that you need to think about when it comes to patterns, so we've talked about scale, but your colouring is really, really important. And also your body shape is very important. When you know the colours that suit you and you know the styles that flatter your body shape, then your outfits are going to look far better put together and are really, really going to suit you. So I do one-to-one -one consultations virtually at the moment and in person once the horror of lockdown is over. So if you'd like more personalized information on how to dress your best, then let me know. Has anybody got any questions at all? That's brilliant. Thank you, Lindsay. Let me unmute everybody. Hold on a second.